All right, hello again, and welcome to my continued review of the 2017 Kawasaki Versus X KLE300. The footage that you're going to see in the background here is a trip that I took a couple days ago uh, from Bonners Ferry, Idaho to Camp 9 uh, by Brush Lake over the top and then back into town. The roads you're going to see are indicative of the kind of the roads and... Uh, not quite roads that I plan to ride this bike on, so I'll give you an idea of what it can do, at least has done for me so far. Last week, I managed to make the uh, 600 mile mark after about two and a half to three weeks of ownership. I'd have to look at a calendar and who has time for that. Um, at any rate, uh, 670 miles, I did my first oil change, and uh, it's pretty simple pull three little bolts off of the side cover that gives you access to the drain plug and the uh, fuel filter excuse me the oil filter took about 15 minutes all total including the time to find my 17 millimeter wrench um, I also did have to dig up a pipe wrench because the oil filter does not have enough space between the exhaust pipe and the oil filter to get my standard um, <coughs> excuse me oil filter wrench in there so I used the pipe wrench to get it off the K&N that I put back on has a 17 millimeter nut on the top of the oil filter so that won't be an issue next time a um, couple of things that I've noticed one I have a pair of boots that seems to fit just a little bit differently than some of the other riding boots that I have and um, you've got to be really careful to dip your toe down between first and second gear because it holds just enough pressure on that lever that you can't shift up past first gear until you rock the toe down, get all the pressure off of that lever, and then come back up. It's not really an issue for me unless I'm trying to go through the gears quickly and every once in a while I forget to rock it all the way down. So I just wear a different pair of boots. The other thing is the temperature. Uh, most of the riding that I've been doing have has been in the 50s and 60s, some of it even in the low 70s. The temperature gauge on there is a segmented LED and it uh, has a tendency to run up until the last, well there's one segment that's not lit up which would indicate high I presume. So once it gets to that last segment then the fan will come on, cools the engine back down and it drops down to half or below. So it hasn't been an issue. But it's something I'm going to keep an eye on as I ride more because, you know, it's pretty early in the year. And with temperatures in the 70s, if it's doing that, it makes me wonder what's going to happen when I hit the 80s and 90s on some of these, uh, you know, bumpy roads. Uh, the engine's working a little bit harder, although, you know, truthfully, with the six-speed gearbox, not really a big deal. I almost never drop into first in most of this, like what you're seeing this hill here, uh, I'm going up in third gear probably. Um, don't know, but I'm guessing maybe Kawasaki and I have a slightly different idea of what any road, any time means. Uh, I think if they had the same thing I had in mind, there would be a little bit more armor on the bike. But I mentioned that in my first review. And time will tell how well that works out. The bike has a 296cc engine, uh, coupled with a six-speed gearbox. And so far, to me, it seems to strike a an enjoyable if not perfect balance between getting the right kind of power fuel economy um, you know and speed that I want for what I'm doing my average fuel economy right now is 64 uh, the indicated fuel economy on the instant gauge on the dashboard runs about 60 when I'm at 65 and above and it runs uh, well it does drop down into 50 sometimes if I'm pushing it like up to 70 75 um, I get 70 miles to the gallon at most things that are under 5,000 rpm and actually it's more like 70 to 80 to 90 depending on what the terrain is like so I think when I'm out riding in the dirt I'm probably getting 65 miles to the gallon um, most of my speeds are limited to less than 65 just because the speed limit around here is 60 so most of the roads that I have to ride on to get to the dirt are 60 mile an hour roads so I ride 60 65 and it's all good um, 
The bike handles really well. I've started to learn to cover the brake a little bit because when you roll off the fuel, the compression on the engine actually knocks your speed down pretty quick. So if you're in gravel or something, you might want to be able to transfer some of that weight back to the front by engaging a little bit of front brake. Way different than my last bike, which is a 2001 Harley-Davidson Heritage Softail. Both great bikes. Uh, this one seems better suited for the area that I live in. So that's it for now. Hopefully my buddy and I will get a chance to get out and do some riding, and we'll be able to see side-by-side side what the KLR looks like. I'm sure that it's going to have a bit of an advantage over rough terrain, as it does have um, more ground clearance and he's got uh, you know the stock knobby tires on it so anyway that's it for now catch you later